We're getting in the game for less than 10 grand. If that sounds appealing to you, buckle up. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. Today we're getting into the game for less than $10,000 and we're doing so for my man, Bill Al, out of state investor, right? Where does Bill Al live? Who the fuck cares? Because it doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter where you live. New York, Kansas City, Cleveland, fucking uh, Italy. I don't fucking know because it doesn't matter because what we do, what we do on this show is we help people no matter where in the world they live invest in low cost real estate. Today specifically, Bill, I'm going to get you a property that's going to require under $10,000 of your money right in a suburb that you specifically have targeted because we find the best rental markets in the country and we work for you on your behalf on the ground. I will broker the sale, handle the property management, handle the evictions, handle the construction, right? If your tenant doesn't pay rent, I will physically punch those fuckers in the face and remove them from your property. I'm literally kidding. I will not physically punch them in the face because that would be assault. That would be le illegal. Uh, legally speaking, we will legally judo chop them with the court system, but we will not physically assault them because that would be horrible. More information on how horrible that would be can be found by clicking the Landlords from Hell show I am talking about in the notes below because I had some psycho-ass landlord booby trap. That's right. Booby trap his rental property was spiked death boards because his tenants weren't paying rent. I actually interviewed his tenants. We talked about the whole situation. Now, don't get me wrong. I thought his tenant was a fucking asshole. I didn't like that guy. He was an idiot. I understand why the landlord was mad, but Jesus Christ, guys, you got to hire professionals to handle these things for you. You can't fucking booby trap your house, man. That's like... Not only does it, like, probably not going to work, number one. Number two, that's, like, illegal. That's, that's like, a fucking assault crime. Like, dude, you probably, that's, like, a felony, I'm guessing, right? Like, I don't know. I, I've never, like, you know, looked into the statutes on, like, making medieval death booby traps. But, like, guys, you can't do that. You can't let this game mess with you, right? So if you're somebody who's thinking about doing something insane, check out that video. If you're somebody who's not doing something insane, what you probably did is you probably emailed my team at sales at holtonweiss.com and had my team make you a video like I'm doing for Bill and have the actual professionals handle your property because when bad stuff happens, guys, Holton Weiss is there to handle it legally. We protect your interests, but we do it legally, right? So you don't got to get your hands dirty. You don't got to get frustrated. That is the value add here, right? That stuff is really important, right? It's not just a sales pitch getting you to look at all my other stuff, right? It's super important, right? Because why? Because we're talking about getting in the game for less than 10K. A lot of people, a lot of people are going to sell you uh, an idea, a plan, a course, a guru this, a guru that about getting in the game with little to no money down, right? But where are they in the real world? Will they actually really be your team that goes to the... The courts goes through the court system to evict non-paying tenants. Will they actually be there to broker the sale for you? Are they licensed real estate brokers? I am. I've done over $200 million in sales. Will they actually renovate your houses, paint your houses, put in carpet, refinish the floors, meet your tenants, put your tenants in there, do everything? Are they actually there for you after you buy the idea? No. No, they're not. But we are, and that's why it's important. And right now, we're going to go to a quick commercial break, but then after that, we're going to get into the numbers, the details, the real meat of this thing, right? Because buying stuff for under 10K sounds awesome, okay? But you need to know why it's so cheap. Why is this property so much cheaper than properties where you live? Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's jump into the numbers, right? Because this is what it's all about, right? This property is incredibly cheap, okay? It's an incredibly cheap property. 
2338 Livingston Avenue, Lorraine, 44052. It's been on the market for two weeks, listed at $41,000. There's a few reasons why this is listed so cheap and why it still hasn't sold and why I think I can pick it up for you for even less. As a matter of fact, I believe I can get you this property for less than $10,000 out of your pocket. The first thing I'm going to say is how would we do that, right? Well, I believe I can pick this up for you for $37 thousand dollars now market rent what's that going to get you 900 a month on a section 8 tenant right what does that look like well after you factor in your fixed and variable expense estimates it's going to look like approximately five thousand six hundred ninety three dollars a year in actual return purchase price 37k you put down nine thousand two hundred fifty i will get you lenders that will loan you the other 27,750, and that will project out as a 46.4 percent cash on cash return Sounds awesome, but that is not the end of the video. That is not even remotely everything we need to do, right? We need to discuss a lot more. Yes, I understand all those numbers made sense, but like now we have to talk about the who, the what, the where, the why. What is going on, okay? First thing, Cleveland Market. This, Lorraine, it's a city west of cleveland about half hour 45 minutes west so it's off the radar not a lot of people on a national basis are looking at lorraine they hear cleveland they think cleveland cavaliers cleveland browns you never hear about lorraine so it's a little bit off the radar that keeps prices low another reason that the prices are low is there's two kinds of people that can buy houses folks number one people that want to live there they ain't gonna buy this house right we only have two photos of this house and it it's not super pretty. I'll definitely be the first person to tell you that. It's definitely unkempt in the yard. And then we got the little garage shed thing in the back, and then we got nothing else. We don't have anything inside. Why? Because there's a tenant living there, okay? Tenants don't like people coming through their houses, especially in a post-COVID world, right? So people that want to live there, they can't because somebody already does, right? So that eliminates half the buyer pool. Now we only have people that want to own this as a rental property investment, people like you. But a lot of people like you are passing up on this for two reasons. One, because what I just said, it looks unkempt, right? It looks pretty rough right here, okay? Like, this is not <laughs> like what a good yard looks like, obviously, right? So we could assume, even without photos, that the interior is not super nice, right? If you're down to have a yard look like that, I'm sure you don't keep a clean home inside that's one issue. The other issue is the rent, right? It's a $900 a month rental, okay? But the current tenant is a long-term, month-to-month tenant, only paying $675. So now, owner-occupied people, they don't want this house because there's a tenant. Investors like you, you're passing up on the house because you're worried about the condition of it based on the outside, and you're worried about the cash flow because you think it's only a $675 a month rental. It's not. It's a $900 rental. We would need to get that rent up from $675 to $900, but a lot of people don't know that the market rent over here for Section 8 tenants is actually $900 for this house. What we would do is slowly increase the rent. We wouldn't do it immediately because that would be crazy, right? If we just came in legally, yes. In this market, 30-day notice, they're on a month-to-month -month lease. We could say, yo, your rent is 900 But we don't want to do that, right? Not because I'm a bleeding heart and I'm like, no, oh, we can't displace this tenant. That's not it, right? It just doesn't make sense from a financial standpoint for you, the landlord, okay? If you come into a rental that's only 675 and you say, hey, bruh, you got to pay 900 now. They're going to be like, hey, bruh. Here's my notice. I'm moving out, right? You don't want that because I'm telling you right now to get it Section 8 ready market rent, I don't see a scenario you're spending less than 10 grand just based on what the outside looks like, right? Your next turnover, this tenant's been here for years. They don't keep it kept up very well. Your next turnover is going to be expensive. Now, your subsequent turnovers in between that will be less because we're going to harden the property, right? But I can almost guarantee you you're looking at your next turnover of at least 10K because there ain't no way that that's going to look rent ready on the inside when that sucker moves out, right? So what we want to do is keep that money coming in as long as humanly possible, right? I would recommend going in, re-signing them to a one-year lease at their current rent of 675 We want them on our own lease in case they don't pay rent. When we actually do go to evict them, 
we are going to be doing much better in eviction court, right? Can you evict a tenant who doesn't pay rent without a lease? Absolutely, but it is a little bit more difficult. Oftentimes, these tenants are able to at least get the eviction hearing delayed at least one time, requiring a second court appearance, which we still get them out. But every time Holton Wise has to go to court on your behalf, well, guess what, motherfucker? We're charging you for that, right? So what we want to do is get them on our lease, right? Because what the tenants like to do, a common tactic that the tenants have when a new landlord takes over a property if they don't pay rent the first time, they like to utilize that as an excuse. They like to tell the judge, I didn't even know who to pay rent to. I paid it to the old landlord. How was I supposed to know the property sold? They never told me. Now, of course, that's a lie. We do tell them. We post notices. We do everything we possibly can, right? We're trying to get that money. That's what we're here for, right? We ain't trying to buy the property and manage the property without collecting the rent, right? So it's a lie, and uh, the tenants always end up losing those cases, but the judge will typically... Uh, delay it, right? Give them another hearing, right? So they could find proof of that, right? They'll say, hey, well, you know, we'll uh, continue this and you find the old landlord and bring him in as a witness kind of deal. And then they never do and then we win. But that still costs you a little bit more money than it needs to, right? So right off the rip, we don't want to scare the tenant into moving out. We want to make sure the tenant knows their rent ain't going up right now to entice them to sign that new lease with us in case they fuck things up and then we're going to boot their fucking asses out of that house as easy as possible with a new lease, right? So I'd like to go 675, keep them in there, get them on our lease, get them on our rules, get a payment history from them. Then the next year, we start going up. 25, 50, right? The game of the game is to keep them in the unit as long as possible to get the rent as close to 900 as possible without that turnover, right? In this business, folks, there's going to be enough turnovers to go around, okay? You never need to be in a hurry to remove an income stream to send Holton Wise like 10, 15 grand to renovate your unit, right? There's going to be enough renovations to go around in your rental property ownership. Never create an artificial turnover. Just wait and do as few of those renovations as you can during the time you own the property, right? If you have investor A who owns this property for 30 years, and he rents it for six seventy five for thirty years, and he only does one renovation every ten years. And then you got another investor who rents it for nine hundred, but he renovates it every two years. The guy who rented it for six seventy five is actually going to come out on top, right? So we're going to try to get the best of both worlds, do fewer renovations, and still get to that nine hundred. But it's going to be a slow process, which is why I believe I can get this property for you for only thirty seven thousand, which is again. Less than 10K out of your pocket. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.